Hi, today we're looking at some of the PCBs that we received from JLC PCB. So these are for the ring light. Now these did arrive a couple of days ago. I think it took around seven days in total to actually get the boards. But it's been way too hot to do any videos. It was reaching about 34 in here the other day. Uh, we're at 25.6, which is a lot more palatable than it was previously. It's just unbearable. So finally, we're able to have a look at these. I think this is half of the ring light PCBs, but this is how they typically package the PCBs when you get them assembled. So they come in this pink bubble wrap. Unfortunately, no proper anti-static shielded bags, just this pink bubble wrap that is designed not to generate any static while you um, wrap it up and while you're moving it around. So here we go, we'll just have a look at, uh, they're normally packed in twos back to back and just uh, wrapped in the bubble wrap like that. That tends to be how they've been coming every time. I've not had any damaged boards from that. So here is our PCB and it's looking pretty good. We've got nothing on the underside as we expect. So we've just got all of these vias tying the top and bottom planes together. Let's have a closer look actually at the PCB. So here we've got our LED driver. We've got our nice chunky inductors, flyback diode, obviously the LED regulator and all of that stuff. So that's all looking very nicely placed and soldered. Uh, we've got our power LED at the front here. So that's a white LED with the yellowy colored phosphor. Got our brightness control parts here. And then we've got our 24 volt input just here. And we have got the missing parts. So we'll just check whether they fit. Sometimes these slots um, are a little bit difficult to get right. But we've got one of our Cliff DC connectors here. Let's try plugging that in. Yeah, and that sits nicely, nice and flush to the PCB. And you can see those contacts are sitting in there nicely. And we've got our Alps potentiometer. Let's see if that fits in. And yep, yeah, no problems there. And then finally, our power switch with the quite chunky connections there. Oops. And yeah, that sits in there really nicely. So I think what we can do is solder these parts in. Right, so I've soldered some wires onto a couple of the LED pads so that we can put a DC load across each bank once we're ready to test the LED drivers. But first of all, just power it up without anything connected and just make sure we've got no excessive current draw. So we've got the power supply set to 24 volts and about 45 milliamps on the current limit. Oh, and that's not good. So we're drawing the full 45 milliamps. We've got the LED glowing very slightly, but the voltage has dropped right down to 4.5 volts. So we've definitely got a problem somewhere with the PCB. Uh, let's have a quick look at the schematic. So we've got our 24 volts coming in. We saw the LED wasn't glowing at full brightness, so we're definitely not losing all our current down here. And then it goes off to the brightness control. And all of this, yeah, all of this is powered through R7. So I guess to narrow down where the problem is, we can measure the voltage across this resistor here. So we've got a 2.2k resistor and that is powering all of this electronics. So we can see whether we've got a problem in this part of the circuitry here by measuring the voltage and that will tell us the current going into this node. So let's power it up again. I've got my multimeter. And we'll power it up and measure the voltage through that resistor. 1.227. So we've got 1.227 divided by 2.2k and that's telling us 557 microamps is going through that. So our problem is definitely not with the brightness control. So let's have a look where else the problem could lie. So it doesn't look like anything to do with this. We've only then got our LED drivers. So we've got the 24 volts coming in. We could have a faulty capacitor or something like that where it's cracked and shorted out. Uh, 24 volts going in, also through our sense resistor. But this part of the circuit is open circuit still. So we've got no direct current path back to ground. Uh, so let's just check our AL8805 datasheet and make sure we've got the pin out correct. 
So a quick look at the data sheet, and I can't see anything immediately wrong. The pinout all looks correct, so I'm not sure if we've got something wrong on the PCB. Let's have a closer look at the board. So we showed we weren't getting any excessive current going through into the brightness control, but we have got a link from the brightness control to these LED drivers. So what I do want to check is just that the output voltage here from our brightness control isn't getting pulled to some strange level. So what we're going to try and do is get one probe on the negative input and then the other one on the output to the LED drivers. And we should see a voltage going from about half a volt all the way up to two and a half volts. Now we might not quite get to two and a half volts because our supply voltage on the board is already dropping down to just under five volts. So we may not be able to uh, get enough voltage here, but let's see what happens. So minimum just under four and a half and maximum just under two and a half volts. So our brightness control seems to be working okay. Let's have a look at what the open circuit voltage is on the LED output. So we'll get the probes on here and we'll power it up. 4.3 and then it starts dropping. So let's try the same thing on the other LED driver. Four point five, and then that one also starts dropping. So we do have a systematic error. It's not like something's just gone wrong on one of the LED drivers. It looks like we've got a problem with something on the board. So I'm just going to do a little bit more experimentation. Maybe I mean I can't see why it would do, but maybe it does need some load on here, or it's expecting some kind of load. Let me see if we've got something that I can place on the outputs here. So we've got some fifty-five ohm resistors here. Let's try turning it on again. And we're getting absolutely nothing on this bottom LED driver. And nothing on the top one. Let's turn up the current. So about 120 milliamps, six volts, we're actually getting some voltage on there but it's doing something a little bit strange as you can see. Let's have a look at the bottom LED driver and still nothing at all on the bottom LED driver no matter what position the potentiometer is in. I'm tempted to turn the current up some more and I guess if something blows up we'll know what the problem was. So now we're at 260 milliamps Still nothing on the bottom LED driver. And 7 volts, which is the same as the incoming voltage on the top one. So just trying to work out what that actually means, we saw a voltage drop across this resistor of basically the incoming supply voltage. The incoming supply had dropped down to 7 volts because we set the current limit up. And that means that we're not actually conducting enough current through this resistor to cause the regulator to actually go into regulation. So with our potentiometer set to the minimum, our current set point is somewhere in the region of about 187 milliamps, which means that we'd actually need to see 10 volts across this resistor before it starts regulating that uh, current through the resistor. Otherwise, it's just dumping all of the voltage across it. The fact that we're seeing nothing across this resistor here is a little bit more puzzling. If we have a look at the schematic again, we've got a current path from our 24 volt rail through our current sense resistor straight into where we've got our resistor and then it goes through the inductor back through the switch and then it should go to ground but for, for whatever reason we're not seeing any voltage being developed across that resistor once it's in place. So I hate doing this to a new PCB, but I've just desoldered the bottom LED driver because this part of the circuitry didn't seem to make sense. I've just connected up the meter in current mode. And now if we turn it on, the top LED driver is working absolutely fine. So we're getting our current all the way up to just under 800 milliamps, which is what we expect. So the top LED driver is working fine. So the question now is, have we got a problem 
with the LED driver chip that came on this PCB, or is there some kind of connectivity error on the board? So we had the top circuit working properly. What I've done now is desoldered that working IC and put the LED driver that was in the bottom position on here. And I've changed nothing else. The power supply is on. Let's turn on the power to the PCB. And we're getting about 55, 58 milliamps. If I turn the current up, in fact, it starts collapsing. We're drawing 382 milliamps from the power supply and it's definitely not going through this resistor. So I'm going to desolder that IC once again and put the working one on the bottom circuit and just check that we didn't cause damage to this by something that was incorrect on the bottom part. But I've probed everything out and everything seems to probe out okay. So I'm wondering if we're just looking at a faulty IC. So now we've got the LED driver soldered into the bottom position. Let's turn it on. 169 milliamps. 27 milliamps being drawn from the power supply at 24 volts. And 782 milliamps. So bugger, we <laughs> had a faulty LED driver IC on the first PCB that we picked out of the box. So that's a little bit unfortunate. Uh, it does give a little bit of worry as to how many of these I'm going to have problems with and unfortunately I didn't order any of these LED drivers from LCSC when I ordered the switches and the potentiometer. I'm just quickly going to grab another one of these PCBs out of the box and just check that that one behaves properly but that's quite annoying. So I don't know what's going on here we're getting a whole bunch of faulty ICs I've got a few here I picked another one out of the box soldered it up with the connector and everything, powered it up and bang, it's drawing all the current from the power supply. Both of the ICs on this PCB were faulty, so that one's not working. I took another board out of the box, that one's working fine. Another one here, you can see I started to not fit all of the parts and just wire link them out. This one's working fine, it's drawing just over 8 milliamps, which is exactly what we'd expect. We've got just under 8 milliamps going through the Zener diode and through the dimmer circuit. The LED is drawing less than a milliamp and we just got the quiescent current for the DC to DC. So this one's working fine. But yeah, we're getting some failures. I don't think it's my circuit. It all seems to look correct. I had a quick probe. We're not seeing any strange voltages when it starts up or anything like that. So I don't know what's going on. It's either that JLC PCB through LCSC have got some faulty parts. Either that or they're got some handling procedures and we're getting some ESD damage. I really don't know. So I'm going to get in contact with JLC PCB. I don't know what the situation is if you have faulty parts. I don't know if they'll credit the amount. I don't know whether they'll send out replacement parts, whether they will send out replacement PCBs. I really don't know. So I'll let you know what happens on that front. But really quite a strange situation. If you are faced with this, let me know how you would have started the troubleshooting, whether you would have followed the same steps or whether you would have jumped somewhere else. But leave your thoughts and stuff in the comments down below. Also, if you just got some thoughts about what might be the problem, generally speaking, then also I'd be really interested to hear from you. But hopefully you found the video useful. Hopefully we'll get down to the bottom of this. But until next time, thanks for watching.